Today we're going to find solutions to equations that contain products that equal zero. The warm-up is asking you to figure out which values of the variables make each equation true. This is something I'd like you to do on your own and write up in a discussion so you can talk about it with your classmates. So if you want to pause the video and do that, go ahead, do that now. Come back to the video when you're done. The zero product property states that if the product of two numbers is zero, then one of the numbers must be zero. Just to review, the word product means two quantities being multiplied together. It's the result of a multiplication. So we're going to take the zero product property out for a spin. Let's try it. So we're going to solve for each equation and find its solution or solutions and be prepared to explain our reasoning. Okay. So our first problem, x minus 3 equals 0, we can ask ourselves a, a couple questions. We can say, well, what value, what value minus 3 would give me 0? Well, um, in order to cancel out the minus 3, I need a positive 3. So the value of 3 is what x would be. I could plug it back in, 3 minus 3, and it equals 0. All right. Number 2, I want you to take a few minutes. I want you to hit pause and try these problems. As you'll, you'll notice, there's a couple repeats. So you'll see some repetition and some answers that are shared. But take a minute, try it on your own, and then hit play and we'll go over it. All right, let's try it. So you've already figured out that this is x equals negative 11. Right, because if I plug in a negative 11 here, we're going to get 0 when I add 11. All right, now this one you may have thought was a little more tricky, understandably, because now we have this leading coefficient of 2. So we have to figure out what value of x will make 2x plus 11 equal to 0. Some of you may have thought, thought it through. You, your first instinct might have been, oh, let me make it negative 11 because that's positive 11, and that's a good instinct. But we also have this times 2 to deal with, and if we divide by 2, that'll take care of the times 2. Now, another way, we, so we could think about it just reasoning through, but another way we could consider is, say, do the same thing to both sides of the equation. We could take 11 away from both sides, and we end up with 2x equals negative 11, and then divide both sides by 2. And then we get the same answer, x equals negative 11 halves. So that would be our solution to number 3. All right, I'm going to clear off the screen so we can see better. Okay, let's focus on number 4. Number 4 is a little different because it's got two factors. It's saying, what about x? And then, what about 2x plus 11? Now, we just figured out 2x plus 11. And we said the value that of x that would make this part 0 is negative 11 halves. So if I plug in x equals negative 11 halves to both of my x's, this is what's going to happen. I get negative 11 halves in the first x. And then I would multiply 2 times negative 11 halves plus 11. All right, let's see if this works. So 2 times 2 and divide by 2 cancel out, and I end up with negative 11 plus 11. So negative 11 plus 11 is 0. All right. 0 times any number gives me 0. So 0 times negative 11 halves is still 0, and that's a true statement. So this is going to be one solution of that equation. But is there another way to make this whole product 0, right? So I'm multiplying this x times this. So we already figured out what made this quantity equal 0. Now we need to figure out what value of x will make this 0. 
and it's almost so simple, it's challenging, but it's just zero, right? What value of x makes that zero? Well, if x equals zero. So if x equals zero, or if x equals negative 11 halves, both of those will result in making that a true statement and resulting in zero. That was number four. All right, I would like you to stop since we've, we've tried that. I want you to hit pause again and try five, six, and seven. Now that we've talked about it a little more, I want you to try five, six, and seven again. Go ahead and hit pause, try them, and then hit play. All right, hopefully you've tried these because it helps you the best. If you've tried them, you can get some feedback. So we've already talked about that factor up here, right? The value of x equals 3 is what made that 0. So let's plug in 3 and see what happens. 3 minus 3. Notice I'm plugging in 3 to both places where I see an x. If I say x is 3, it can only be 3. I can't let x equal two different numbers at the same time. So 3 minus 3 is 0, and 3 plus 11 is 14. And 0 times 14 is 0, because 0 times anything is 0. So 3, the value of letting x equal 3, it worked, right? So that's one solution. Another solution we could have gotten was negative 11, but let's, I just want to show you that it works. Negative 11 plus 11 is one factor, right? The other factor was, sorry, negative 11 minus 3. All right, so let's multiply those out, or add them up, right? So negative 11 plus 11 is 0, um, and negative 11 minus 3 is negative 14. So negative 14 times 0 is still 0, so that one works too. Huh, it turned out they both ended up being 14. That doesn't always happen. All right, one's negative, one's positive. So the solutions we discovered were positive 3 and a negative 11. So x equals positive 3 or x equals negative 11. So that was for problem number 5. If you think you're getting the hang of it and you want to try the next couple, on your own, if you still haven't tried, you can always hit pause, try them yourself, and then check in. Okay. So there are two remaining. All right, I think I'm going to cover these up. Mm, no, that's okay. All right, we are just going to go like this so we can focus more. Okay, we are looking at number six. So uh, we have two factors, x minus 3 and 2x plus 11. And we want to figure out what value of x will make this factor equal to 0. x minus 3 equals 0. What value of x makes that 0? And some of you just can reason through that and say, oh yeah, x equals 3. Others might feel more comfortable adding 3 to both sides. And that's OK. Add 3 to both sides, and you see that x equals 3. That is one way to make, whoa. Sorry, I made a mistake over here. Let's put that, correct that. I should say equal zero. Sorry, if you did that on your paper, go back and fix it. It should say equal zero. All right. Um, if I plug in a three here, three minus three is zero, and zero times anything is zero. Right? I'm plugging that three in here. Two times three is six. Six plus 11 is 17. But zero times any number is going to give me zero. Okay. So then we need to get this other factor, 2x plus 11, and set it equal to 0. So this is a little more tricky, but we've already done one like this, right? Subtract 11 from both sides, uh, negative 11, and then divide by 2. All right, hey, we've seen that answer before. x equals negative 11 halves. So that's the other answer. If I plug that value both here, and here, this factor would turn into 0, and 0 times anything is 0. OK, so our two solutions for number 6 are 3 or negative 11 halves. All right, one more to check on. All right, number 7. Let's focus on 7. Number 7. Wow, it's got three factors. So it's got x, it's got x plus 3, 
and it's got 3x minus 4. So let's think about for a second, what is going to make all of this turn 0? If I had a times b times c equals 0, either a has to equal 0, or b has to equal 0, or c has to equal 0, because 0 times anything is going to equal 0. Okay, so we want to say, okay, what would make that 0? Well, 0. All right, what would make this 0? The value x equals negative 3 would make that 0. And what value would make this 0? Oh, we need to do a little work. Okay, so we're going to say 3x minus 4, set it equal to 0. What value of x makes this 0? Add 4 on both sides. So we have 4 equals, that cancels out, 3x. Divide by 3 on both sides. And we get x equals 4 thirds. All right, those are our three solutions. And I need to just re-emphasize, over-emphasize, that I would plug zero back into all three of these x's. And if I did that, this whole thing, this whole product would equal zero. Or I could plug negative three back in to all of my x's at the same time. I can only let x equal one of these at any given time. If I plug negative three back in, I would plug 3 times negative 3 minus 4. I would plug a negative 3 back in and multiply all of that out, right? Or I could plug in 4 thirds to all three x's, okay? All right. But any of these values would make that 0 because I just find what makes that 0, what makes that 0, what makes that 0.